jamespoartistry.online. Good day, perceptive readers. This is James Lentz, and this is a James Poartistry Consultant Moment. One of the reasons why I'd like to emphasize to you uh, that this is something, in my opinion, you see, or otherwise this is something uh, based totally in the facts or truth of God's word, the Bible, is so that you will know. If I say something, this is according to my opinion, uh, then you can actually decide for yourself whether you're listening to it or not. You see what I'm saying? This is just something that's based on experience. And, you know, other people's opinions actually bear a factor on good things happening. I mean, financially, spiritually, and otherwise, it really does. And then it helps until persons find this just doesn't fit towards my uh, situation, towards uh, my environment. It doesn't fit uh, towards my culture or what have you. And so since it is just opinion, you will just, you know, uh, store it away somewhere. You, you won't even um, apply it to your situation because it doesn't apply to your situation. And see, with that being said, let me tell you what is still found out, has been found out, even in God's word, the Bible, and establishing Christian congregations uh, around the world. See, what has been found out, and this is nothing new, is you're always going to have God's word, the Bible, uh, the final authority on everything. And yet at the same time, what has been learned from God's word, the Bible, is God's patience. So what am I sharing this with you for? You will see that in the core nucleus of God's congregation, God's sanctuary, see, in heaven, everything is perfect. It is the way that you see what I'm saying? God, it, before it's wrong, everything is perfect. Yet, when it travels to the earth, uh, uh, towards the ones who he has created as shepherds and caretakers and things of that nature, you will see even still a perfect foundation. Uh, everybody knows what is what. You see what I'm saying? doesn't mean there's perfect human beings, but you still have the perfect foundation of God's word. Now, preaching this throughout the whole world, though, uh, you will have persons that ha that just have a long ways to go, uh, procedure-wise, um, personality-wise, etc. Uh, you remember, there's different growth even in different areas. If you had um, a place that uh, was just closed off to civilization uh, for the longest of times. It's a lot of things, you know, that they may not even know, you see, uh, or even use, especially in the technology uh, area. OK, well, it's the same way spiritually at times. And so with that understanding of God's patience, you will find in different areas of the world where there are still things that even a congregation may be doing. You see what I'm saying? That you won't find another congregation in another part of the world uh, would do it at all. Wouldn't even give it any thought or, or, you know, anything of that nature. And yet, you know what? Uh, it's like God's patience is bringing that congregation along, you see, at the pace it needs, uh, you know, to come along with. Now, I stated that to let you know this. See, in some of my um, observations of knowing these types of situations, you see, okay, it's one thing, as I said before, uh, to be patient. And yet what I've actually observed at times with the spiritual paradise of God, uh, you know, it makes me think about the Quakers. It makes me think about even other units, uh, uh, what they call them, uh, Protestants and things of that nature, 
uh, communities of people, you know, starting you know, from the 1800s onwards, so that sometimes you can just tell they uh, they just had a piece about themselves. See, uh, <clears throat> uh, they were coming along with the accurate knowledge that they did have, and they didn't bother, you see, anybody. And it certainly didn't bother them to be really jealous of another congregation, someone claiming to be a congregation of God, you see, that was outside <coughs> of their community. Okay. Yet I've seen, it seems like a, a role reversal in some cases where, where uh, the persons will appreciate some of the uh, the teachings of God's word, the Holy Bible, in talking with uh, ones from the core nucleus of God's uh, congregation. That's the way I'm going to say it. And yet, <clears throat> in some cases, it's like instead of just being, you know, happy and satisfied with the knowledge uh, that they're uh, getting or receiving, some have really taken it upon themselves. It seems to me in some cases where it doesn't seem it's like, I know, I know where they're, instead of just being satisfied with what they're learning and, 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 and hearing and things of that nature, it's almost like they're trying to take the core nucleus of still what the truth is of the matter and turn God's nucleus of core to something that it was not meant to be. Uh, trying to take more authority over it that it wasn't meant to have that type of authority, that type of influence uh, on, on it in that way. That That's uh, my observation. And this is one of the reasons why I emphasize about Romans chapter two, about thievery and stealing. I stand by and I will continue to stand by. You have any man or woman who has for years Develop and created their own intellectual property and words and websites and stuff like that. You have no business at all doing something behind their back, making your own money off it. But you are withholding their money from them. That is not right. And I told you, anybody who will continue to do that and then keep gaslighting the person and keep saying it's not about money or what have you. And you know what? I keep saying again, they don't have a leg to stand on. They don't have a leg to stand on to say that this person is a bad person. They don't have a leg to stand on to say that this person is being disobedient or what have you. Uh, the abuse on this level that some persons have experienced, it's like, uh uh. You, you want to come to me talking righteousness, but all your practices and ways are of the devil, the way that you're treating me. And and so I'm emphasizing that because, see, these are the things that, uh, from what I've known of the Christian congregation, uh, see, that there are just certain shepherds, gifts of men and stuff like that. Yeah, that you know, you went a bit more in the world. How to worry about that coming from them. Even though, in my experience, I know I ran into some that were that corrupt. But see, it still didn't change the fact that there was others that weren't that corrupt or weren't corrupt at all. That's what I should say in that way. Weren't greedy at all in that way. And so one of my experience now, this seems that the greedy ones who boy, will practically do almost anything with their covetousness have actually uh, bad mouth some of these persons so bad now that even if they were to 
catch or know of a crime or murder, I would say, and would try to report it, that their name has been slandered so bad that the people wouldn't even want to hear the proof of the matter that they have on this situation or that situation. That's how out of whack the, the ignoring of Matthew chapter 5 and Matthew chapter 18 and Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 has become in this day and age. And they will make it justify, uh, they are justifying it to other persons that it's okay to uh, take from somebody. And I told you, I've heard some of the scriptures uh, that they uh, try to use and things of that nature. And I keep saying again, for every scripture that they twist the spirit and true meaning behind what was going on, I told you, I can show you other scriptures that go that really show the spirit of love of why we do things in the way that we do um, unless there's some really extreme, complicated, you see, situation. And even then, as I told you, people, when they have an agenda with greed and covetousness in mind, they will sure try to push something to be in a complicated way manner to use those type of extreme situations that guess what one to wisdom really know that uh uh-uh, uh this this just doesn't fit or what have you but guess what the ones who hide in what they are they're just working very hard to make it that way and to keep it that way those are the type of influences that according to God's word, the Holy Bible, are some of the, what I call, you know, from the Bible, machinations and and deceitful teachings of Satan uh, that we are continually supposed to fight against. You know, I always say again, at least you have the truth, whether you apply it or not in your life. And I'm going to tell you something else. Even when it comes to uh, uh, practice uh, what you preach, I've said this before, even if you find of a person who smoke, drink and do everything else or what have you that you don't think they should be doing. I tell you what, if they can still keep their hands to themselves and they're not going upside your head or stealing from you or what have you, even when you stealing from them, you know what? You better be happy that that person's conscious still shows, as you see, an understanding of right and wrong. And in some cases, as I mentioned before, it's interesting that the very persons that talk about right and wrong, then when they go against what is stated in Romans chapter two, then guess what? (laughs) They don't have a leg to stand on either. So that's one thing that I want to emphasize. The core principles and beliefs and the greatest commandments of the laws of the land is love from God's word, the Bible. Now, if you don't agree with this or agree with that, okay. But that doesn't mean that then you come in and you trying to uh, take over the principles of love and helping to contribute, helping to contribute to what Jesus meant about the love of the greater number, I'm cooling off. Because the focus isn't on revenge and hatefulness and vindictiveness, plotting and all that stuff against somebody, taking somebody. The focus is on, it still is, righteousness and forgiveness. And that's why when you do have a... a, difficult situation with this person or that person, that's why you're supposed to actually handle it yourself first, the first steps with that person before you go and start spreading it all out to everybody under the blue moon about this or that. You see, that's what we do. We we don't do that. And so I wanted to just clarify that. Have a very wonderful day. Take care.